The Courting by Mina Kenny, Chapter 18, A Great Secret Revealed. Harry's Point of View, Christmas Eve. Harry, how long do you intend to take? I heard Father ask. I'm doing my hair, Father. I'll be finished soon, I reply, and pinned the last needle into my hair. I cleaned the upper part of my dress from makeup powder and stood up from my chair. I held my gown in one hand while I went downstairs so I wouldn't trip over it. We were going to a Christmas party at the place of Lady Brown. We had been invited, and it, and I was happy that it was just a party and not a ball. I arrived downstairs and let my gown go. I had made my dress myself again. It was made out of dark green and blue fabric, and it was shoulder-free. It, I had made a big gown because I loved the feeling of it bellowing behind me. I wore my rings and no other jewelry. I found it too heavy for today. The other three were all wearing their robes unready to go. Do we have everything? I asked them for my wand into the holder on my lower leg. Yes, we do. We are leaving a little early, so... Mother was broken off by the knock on the door. Fuck, I hope that isn't someone from the village that wants to say Happy Christmas. Father said... Mother went to the door. Father hated when one of us opened it when he didn't know who was coming. But if it was a villager... Explaining father's appearance would be hard. We heard the knocking again and mother opened the door slowly. I couldn't see much. Mother was stopping my view. I could see a bit of his arm. He was muscular and he had some scars on his arm. He was as tall as Neville, maybe some inches shorter. And I thought I spotted a bit of a red beard. Hello, Lord Prince. I'm sorry for my sudden arrival. I wasn't able to inform you earlier. I'm here to see my fiancé, Neville Longbottom. Even when he was still talking, Neville started to run and push Mother away. He threw himself around the neck of the stranger. Charlie! He cried and hugged the man. Hello, love. He gave Neville a peck and hugged him. I knew it! Come in, Charlie, and tell us a little bit about your time in Romania. I said and tried to pry Neville off his betrothed. The man grabbed his suitcase and entered the mansion. Knuckles, father called one of the house elves. Make us some tea. The elf nodded and left. We sat down around the coffee table. I needed one whole love seat with my dress. And started asking Charlie questions. So, how is it going? I asked. Good. The dragons are filling the war, so they are forming little fight groups. Soon they will be interfering to save their own in Great Britain. I am hoping for you that you aren't holding any dragons in captivity. I shook my head. Where should we even hide such big creatures? Neville had snuggled into Charlie, and his fiancée wrapped his arms around him. Green Gods had one once to watch over the old vaults. He was stolen some days ago. Father said and took a sip from his tea. Your grandmother's okay. She is taking her new surroundings well. Our house is full of little orphan dragons. They even take over my bed. <laughs> Neville giggled a little. I told you, grandmother attracts such things. I'm sorry for your bed, but we can sleep in mine, Neville said and looked up to Charlie. Together in one bed, how did you two meet? I asked. Because I couldn't stand how everyone was looking into the eyes of their partners, and I was here alone, Charlie looked at me and started. I am six years older than the twins, as you might know. So, for most of my childhood, it was only Bill and me. He was the eldest, the heir to our family. He was a a wish child, and preferred in every aspect of my family. They intended for me to be a girl, but got a son instead. In their eyes, I was useless. When I was finally old enough to start learning, mother became pregnant again with the twins, and my education was put on hold. I studied for myself most of the time, interested in magical creatures at Hogwarts. 
I again stood in the shadow of my big brother. He had become head boy and had all good grades. I needed to live up to that, and when I didn't, I lost even more support from my family. I started to save money from the beginning of my third year so that I could go to Romania and study with dragons. And I searched for ways to separate myself from my unloving family. And I stumbled over a book over submissive families. And so, at my 17th birthday, I stood in front of the doorstep of Neville's grandmother. She had never given the Lord title to her son. So I discussed the marriage contact between Neville and me with her. My baby here was only eight at that time. So I contacted him again when he turned 15 and made him slowly fall for me. He gave Neville a peck and looked at me again. Now I realize Molly and Arthur Weasley love their children for different reasons. Bill was the heir. The twins, even though they disowned them, were successful businessmen. Ron was the friend of Harry Potter, and Jenny was the girl Charlie wasn't, and Charlie wasn't loved. How long do you intend to stay? Mother asked. Not too long. I will most likely leave in two days. I just came here to spend Christmas with my family. Charlie answered, The dragons are used to people around them. That's why we don't take long vacations, so we didn't invite them. When a worker dies, dragons mourn like humans. They are similar to us in many aspects. Do you remember the Tri-Wizarding Tournament? I nodded. It was a torture for the poor dragons. Whoever thought that bringing dragons into a completely new environment was a good idea must have a negative IQ. We worked three months until they were able to calm down. Thankfully, they didn't kill a worker or another dragon. I have an idea who did this, Dumbledore. We need to get going or Lady Brown will be will get angry, father said, and we left the mansion. End of chapter 18.